Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today we're just taking a quick look at something that's been on my to-do list for a while, the Orbcom IoT satellites. Now Orbcom is a company that's been around for a while. Apparently they started back in the 1990s with these kind of low-tech VHF satellites, and these are actually using the same or similar frequency range to the NOAA weather satellites that I've been looking at before. They're around 137 to 138 megahertz, which is kind of low-tech for satellites. This is older technology. This is a frequency range that doesn't get used much today, but again, these are from back in the Stone Age of the 1990s, and VHF actually turns out to be pretty good for certain applications that just need low data rates, like tracking a shipping container, tracking a semi-truck or a boat, getting brief text message data from like an oil rig platform or sensor data from an offshore buoy, things of that nature. It's not going to give you huge amounts of data, it's not going to give you streaming video, but for simple messaging this VHF frequency seems to work pretty well. As I said, I've had this on my list for a while, mostly because I already have the antenna for it. A while back I built this QFH egg beater thing to pick up NOAA weather satellites, which are also in that 137 megahertz range. And this just lives up on my roof connected to a Raspberry Pi and a little amplifier. And automatically when the NOAA satellites come over, the Raspberry Pi fires up, it starts listening on the NOAA frequencies, downloads the information from those weather satellites, throws it on a web page for me, and I've got automatic, up-to-date weather information. Now the rest of the time this antenna is just sitting there doing nothing, and since Orbcom is in the same frequency range, I think it should work with this antenna. Since I don't actually want to go up on the roof and connect to this antenna directly, I'm going to console into the Raspberry Pi up on the roof there, tell it to send the data from the little software defined radio that's connected to it over the network and then I'll connect to that with another computer in my office so I don't even have to leave the house. So I'm going to walk through this a little bit and I am just going to film the screen. People have asked me to use a screen recorder. I cannot find one that works. I've tried a couple things on Linux. I've tried some OBS on Windows. All I end up with is a blank screen. So yeah, I'm just going to aim the camcorder at the screen and do it the old fashioned way. Anyway, we're going to uh, GitHub, we're going to the fbeberly slash orbcom dash receiver, and then we want to go to the branch that is specifically for TCP. And I'm going to go ahead and download this code. Now when I tried this with the GitHub command line or, or git clone, I just got the main branch. I didn't get the TCP specific one. So what worked for me was to download the zip file of this specific one. Um, you can see I've done this about four times because again I've tried to record screen record this process and I ended up with nothing so this is my fourth try. Anyway we've downloaded and extracted that Orbcom receiver folder into our home directory here on Linux and if I go to my console we have all of the Python scripts that we should need to run this. We don't have to actually install any of this as long as we have Python 3 installed and then all the dependencies so if we go to the readme file here it lists uh, the dependencies that we want, uh, PyRTLSDR, I always call these Numpy and Skippy, but I'm sure they're pronounced differently, and you can just install all of that with one command if you have pip, and then it talks about how to get started with this. I'm going to skip directly down to real-time recording and decoding from the remote RTLSDR, so you'll need to go into your config.py file, put in your latitude and longitude, and then you'll want to run this um, update orbcom TLE script, and that gets the orbital elements from the satellite from the internet, so that way your software knows where the satellites are. Alright, so we've updated that, and then we want to run this real-time receiver network. If there's a satellite overhead, it should pop up right away with this other window showing you uh, some of the satellite information and yeah we're not connected yet to the remote system that's actually sending out the data so this keeps locking up. We're going to pull up the Raspberry Pi here and we're going to run this command RTLSDR frequency symbol rate and we're piping that over to Netcat and we're sending it out to our local machine's IP address. So this dot one four seven is my local machine that I'm on here and then our um, port, this is just the default port in the software so that is pulling up the RTLSDR, it's starting to send out the data and now if we go back to our local machine we are picking up data from the Orbcom satellite. 
Okay, so I may have just misled you slightly because I went back over to the GitHub page and it turns out um, Orbcom 103 stopped working in 2021. So it's no longer transmitting user downlink channels. It has some kind of feeder downlink, but apparently this one is a terrible first example to use because there's nothing really interesting coming from it. You have to wait for one of these other satellites to come overhead. So another thing we can do is run RTL TCP from our remote system that has the software defined radio connected. So we just give it the local IP address of that system. So then if I fire up GQRX, set this up in our devices to connect to a TCP stream. So that same IP address, the RTL TCP, dot seven five is our raspberry pi i can connect to the raspberry pi with gqrx here most of these satellites seem to have two active channels so if you pull this up on gqrx or str sharp or whatever you should be able to see at least two data streams coming down from it our satellite is now drifting farther towards the horizon so we're starting to lose this signal so over on the left here we've got the two channels of orbcom data and then on the right, we've got the signal from NOAA-18, that weather satellite. So if I zoom in on that and turn on the sound, you'll hear that regular tone that we've heard before when listening to these satellites. Now, if we turn on the audio for the Orbcom data stream, it's not gonna really sound like much because it's just digital data coming down. Okay, we've gone back to our Orbcom receive system, and now it doesn't want to focus. I am having endless problems. This was supposed to be an incredibly easy video. No work on my part, just run a couple Linux programs, and nothing is working. The screen recorder doesn't work, the camera doesn't want to focus. Yeah, this is one of those videos that's supposed to be really simple, but is a kind of a giant pain. Okay, we are once again trying to get this to work correctly, so over here on our local console on this computer that I'm looking at right now we're going to run Python 3 real-time receiver again and that says we have five minutes to wait until the next satellite comes up so over here on the Raspberry Pi we are going to run again that RTL SDR command and we're going to cat that over uh, pipe that over to netcat send it to the local computer so that pulls up the RTL SDR starts streaming out this information at this frequency and again nothing is happening right now because we still have to wait five minutes for the satellite so our, our receiver script is not going to do anything until it has a signal to work with so we'll just have to come back in five minutes all right so our script has just popped up saying that the satellite is now overhead so we should be seeing orbcom 109 and we've got some signal information over here we still don't have a good enough signal to actually get any data. It looks like the satellite's elevation is still in the single digits, so it's still too low on the horizon to really get much out of it. But hopefully, in another minute or two here, it'll be high enough, we'll get a better signal, and we'll start seeing something on the right. Okay, and now we're starting to get some encrypted data coming down from that satellite. So this here is some of the customer data. This is from a shipping container or an oil rig or a buoy or something out there in the world but we don't know what it is because again it's all encrypted and you know that's for the best because you don't want just anyone out there to know what your oil rig is doing or where your shipping container is now this code is a little bit flaky unfortunately if you try to do much with the window over here make it bigger or whatnot everything freezes so we're actually going to have to uh, close this out rerun it our satellite is in double-digit elevation now, so it's getting higher in the sky. We're getting a stronger signal from it. There we go. We just got a bunch of fill data, some header data, all kinds of stuff that I don't understand because I'm not that much into encryption, but it still looks pretty cool to be getting some encrypted data off a satellite uh, passing overhead. And again, this is fairly easy to do. You don't really have to have any special gear for this. You can do it with all the same stuff that you use for NOAA weather satellites, or you can just do it with a laptop and an SDR and a coat hanger for an antenna. Okay, now we're getting a little bit more regular data. We're getting some uh, message information, some header information, and then all of those encrypted packets right in the middle there. So our satellite has finally gotten high enough that we're getting uh, regular output from it and the signal's strong enough that our little decoder program here can actually figure out a little bit of what it's saying. I don't know, I, I just think this is cool. This is the kind of thing you put up in the background of a hacker movie or 
you pull up on your computer at home to impress your friends when they come over. It's not useful in any way. It's not practical. I can't do anything with this information, but it sure looks neat to have it up and running, and it looks cool to be able to say, hey, I'm getting this live off a satellite. I'm getting this crazy encrypted data coming down from space. You know, up until the script crashes, that is. One thing we're supposed to be able to see here is the latitude and longitude of the satellite. So this is supposed to be coming down from the satellite and populating onto this little teeny map. Like I said, if I try to make this window any bigger, everything crashes. So we're stuck with the postage stamp sized map here. And I only occasionally get the position data. So I'm not sure why that is, if it's just not coming down correctly. Now I'm not trying to badmouth this script at all because I don't know how to write this kind of Python script. Oh, hey, there we go. We actually just got our Orbcom position to pop up on the map. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, this is a really cool program. It's really neat that it's out there on GitHub for anybody to use. The only other software I saw for this is from left over from back in the 90s for like Windows 95, and I think they still want you to pay $30 for it as shareware. Now, a fellow ham named Chandler, who I've mentioned before on this channel, has given me this little guy here. This is a miniaturized QFH, so similar to that one I have up on top of the house, but in a smaller form factor. I think this is for L-band, and this is labeled for Orbcom. Also Skywave, who I think Orbcom bought. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this is for. I did some research, and it seemed like Skywave mostly used uh, Inmarsat satellites, so a different network, a different frequency, obviously, because this is a much smaller antenna, and I couldn't find a whole lot on Orbcom using L-band like this, so this is a little bit of a mystery antenna to me. I'm going to have to do some more research on this. However, we're going to have to get back to this guy in another video. Like I said, I was trying to keep this one relatively short. I've got a bunch of other stuff to do, so we're going to stop here. Uh, we are going to come back and try to figure out what does this do, but you'll have to wait and see that, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.